Uh, they have a term, a raw arahant, or an uncooked arahant. Meaning someone who's read up on the texts, has it all figured out beforehand, and then forces his meditation into the, the mold that he learned from the book. And then when he's reached the end of his preconceived notions about where the practice leads, and there he was, success in the practice. As you can imagine, it's not a term of praise or of admiration. It's actually a term of derision. The person who thinks he can have everything figured out all beforehand. There's another phrase they have, someone who knows before they're born, or someone who's expert before he's even tried something. It's all basically the same idea. What we're working on here is a skill. And where we're coming from is ignorance, which means that you can get some indication beforehand by reading and listening to people talk. But the actual practice is something you've got to learn how to feel your way through. And it's getting that sense of a right feel. That's the essence of the skill. After all, the, the basic principles apply to everybody, but no one has ever trained your mind before. You're the one who's going to have to train your mind. You're coming from ignorance, but you're going to have to learn how to be your own teacher. And given this situation, what it means is learning how to learn from your mistakes. Make plans as to what you're going to do, and then see what happens. Try to work with your best intentions from the very beginning. What seems to make the most sense, what seems the right thing to do, but also be prepared to make adjustments along the way. And this is at the essence of what the Buddha was teaching Rahula in that, that sutta that I keep referring to. And I keep referring to it because it is so basic and so essential. You can't know beforehand all the time how the results of your actions are going to be. Sometimes you can anticipate, and so you work with your best anticipations, but you have to be alive to the fact that sometimes your anticipations can be wrong. And so the Buddha also teaches you how to deal with the discovery of mistaken anticipations, recognizing sometimes while you're doing something that it's wrong, so you learn to stop. Other times, learning how to read the results of your past actions it requires honesty, integrity. And part of the way of learning honesty and integrity is being willing to confess mistakes when you recognize them, talk them over with someone else who's on the path. Because your willingness to be open and above board about these things means that you're going to be open and above board about them within your own internal conversation. You develop good habits this way. The external habits of speaking become part of your internal speech. So as we practice, it's a combination of learning what we've picked up from other people, taking it to heart, but then also realizing you've got to test it. And things may not come out the way you would have anticipated them. This is part of discernment. It starts with learning from what you've heard and then thinking it through. But then the real insight comes from developing these qualities in the mind. It's like going out in the wilderness. You read up on the maps, you make your plans, and then you get out in the forest and you realize the forest doesn't look like the map. The map is a solid pale green color which has red lines and other things on it. And you look around, you don't see those lines. And the lines are relevant. They're the paths or whatever through the forest. They give you a very sketchy idea of what's out there. 
But you have to realize there's going to be a lot more out there than just the pale green of the map. There are actual trees, actual animals. actual changes in the map sometimes. So it means you plan, but then you have to be prepared for the fact that your plans may have to be thrown overboard as you meet up with new and unexpected things. And this is an important part of the training, how to deal with the unexpected. friend one time back in high school who went into mi for military training. And one of the things I hated most about high school phys ed was long distance running. It would practically kill me. My worst memories of phys ed class were having to do a mile run and coming back and throwing up and just being dizzy. And he told me what I thought was a horror story, that he, part of his military training was running with a full pack on his back. And they were going to run for a mile. And of course, everybody was anticipating the, the finish line. And as they got to the end, then, then the instructor said, OK, one more quarter mile. Of course, there were complaints. But he said, hey, look, when you're out in a battle someplace, you can't have predetermined lines about, OK, this is how far the enemy is going to come, and you have to fight only up to 5 o'clock or whatever. You may have some anticipation of how long the engagement is going to last, but you can never know. You've got to prepare to be prepared for the fact that it could last a really long time. And you've got to learn how to find your resources that you can draw on. And it's the same in the battle with defilements. You can never tell when greed is going to come up and really take over. There are times when lust seems to be really quiet. for weeks and months on end. But you never know when it's going to come back, and you have to be prepared for the fact. So learning to deal with uncertainties is an important skill in the practice, because there are so many uncertain things both inside and out that you're going to have to learn how to deal with. And So it's having the right attitude the right confidence in your ability to read a situation. And that kind of confidence comes not just by learning self-esteem classes, but it comes from learning how to deal with situations and over time, learning which parts of your powers of observation you can depend on and which ones have to be further sharpened. John Mahabwa makes the point that when the defilements are listed in the books, they have nice, neat lists. But when they come up in your mind, they don't follow the lists. They don't come in the proper order. They come all pell-mell. And so you have to be really ready to deal with them pell-mell, whatever order they come up in. There was that question that the king one time asked Buddha, which defilement do you have to deal with first? He says, whichever one arises first. And sometimes they're going to be subtle ones, and sometimes blatant ones. And but they don't line up neatly. So again, it's good to have names for the defilements to get a sense of what you might be dealing with. But you have to be prepared for the fact that there's just a lot going to go on in your mind that's not quite the way it's described in the books. John Lee once made the comment that there's the ways of the mind are so many that no book on earth could possibly cover them all. But fortunately, there are certain basic patterns that you learn from, and then you try applying them. And then when you find you run through your list of skills and your patterns and things are still not working, then you've got to be willing to use your ingenuity and try things out. This is why one of the worst attitudes you could have as a meditator is hope that some Ajahn is going to come and say, well, you have to do X, and that's all you have to do, and you don't have to think about it, just do it, obey instructions, and you'll come out right at the end. It's placing all the responsibility on the Ajahn, and you're not taking any responsibility at all. 
got to be willing to, to experiment, to try your different approaches, and then learn how to read the results. That's the skill in the meditation. So it comes from learning how to deal with unexpected situations, learning, being willing to put yourself in uncertain situations. The willingness to, to have an adventure. And not just an itinerary. I mean, they have itineraries on those cruises that go up the Alaskan Islands. People basically stay in a floating hotel. And what kind of experience do they have? Well, they get off at the, the different ports, and there are all these people willing to give them their prepackaged, pre-digested experiences of the Alaskan wild. But they come back and they never learn anything new. They haven't developed any skills. They've just paid to be given a show. So that's what itineraries are like. An adventure is when you're willing to put yourself in an uncertain situation and learn from the uncertainties. And that's the only way you're going to gain real insight. Again, those three levels of discernment, three levels of understanding. They come from listening, they come from thinking, but it's the actual developing where you begin to gain an intuitive sense, a real feel, say, for what mindfulness is like, what alertness is like. But all the other skillful qualities you need in the mind are like what their potentials are. So then they become real qualities in the mind that they can open up to other qualities in the mind as well. So there's always this element of uncertainty in the practice. That requires your own active participation in taking what you've learned and adjusting it to training your mind. Because as I said, no one else has ever trained your mind before. You're the one who's going to have to train it. So pick up what lessons you can, read the maps. Make your plans, but know that the plans can get washed away pretty quickly. And also realize that many times being thrown on your own resources is where really genuine insight comes. As the John Mahabhava says, that many times discernment doesn't arise until, you're, until you find yourself cornered at the end of your rope. may not be a nice place to be, but it's where new alternatives show themselves. If you're willing to look for them, if you're willing to see them. Otherwise your practice is just like processed cheese. No matter what kind of cheese goes into the factory, you know, it all comes out tasting all the same. Every little piece of processed cheese you had, Kraft Velveeta, has not changed since I was a child. They may wrap it differently, but it's all very predictable. But that's not what we want in the practice. We want something better than that. And any practice that required less than your full participation and your willingness to put things on the line. It's never going to offer you any real surprises. And after all, awakening is, is quite a surprise when it comes. So learn how to deal with the little surprises, and the big surprises will have an opportunity. to show you that there really is something special in life. After all, the Buddha said there are four noble truths. It's not that all life is suffering. Part of life is also the end of suffering.
if you open yourself up to what many times might seem like impossibilities, improbabilities. After all those passages where the Buddha describes the, what we're here for us and to see what we've never seen before, to attain what we've never attained before, to know what we've never known before. That means being willing to do things we've never done before. To encounter things we've never planned before. So learn to enjoy that aspect of the path, because it's crucial. 